In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good day, my dear sisters and brothers. We are celebrating the 17th Sunday in ordinary time, cycle B. And we begin our celebration aware of the the graciousness of God in our lives, the blessings we have received from God. We're also aware of the fact that we have offended God through our own sinfulness. So we ask the Lord to forgive us of our sins as we say together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ, mercy. Have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. We make our prayer through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Reading from the second book of the Kings, they will eat and have some left over. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing Elisha, the man of God, bread from the first fruits, twenty barley loaves, and fresh grain in the air. Give it to the people to eat, Elijah said. But his servant replied, How can I serve this to a hundred men? Give it to the people to eat, he insisted. For the Lord says this, They will eat and have some left over. He served them. They ate and had some over, as the Lord had said. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, o Lord. The feeding of the 5,000. Jesus went off to the other side of the Sea of Galilee or Tiberias. And a large crowd followed him, impressed by the signs he gave by curing the sick. Jesus climbed the hillside and sat down there with his disciples. It was shortly before the Jewish feast of Passover. Looking up, Jesus saw the crowds approaching and said to Philip, where can we buy some bread for these people to eat? He only said this to test Philip. He himself knew exactly what he was going to do. Philip answered, 200 denarii 
could only buy enough to give them a small piece each. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said, there is a small boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what is that between oh so many? Jesus said to them, make the people sit down. There was plenty of grass there, and as many as 5,000 men sat down. Then Jesus took the loaves gave thanks and gave them out to all who were sitting ready. He then said the same with the fish, giving out as much as was wanted. When they had eaten enough, he said to the disciples, pick up the pieces left over so that nothing gets wasted. So they picked them up and filled 12 hampers with scraps left over from the meal of five barley loaves. The people, seeing the sign that he had given, said, this really is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, who could see that they were about to take, come and take him by force, and make him king, escape back to the hills by himself. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Christ. Christ. Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, we I've just listened to sacred scripture and from the first reading from second book of Kings and from the gospel of St. John, we listen to the multiplication of food. In the first reading, Elisha, the prophet of God, a holy man, received 20 loaves of barley bread and a sack of grain. And he asked that the food be distributed among the hundred men that were there. And it was said, it is not enough. It will not be enough. And Elisha, Elisha had this deep faith in God that he was responding to the call of God to feed the people. The hundred men were fed with food left over. The needs were met for the day. And in the Gospel of St. John, Jesus fed 5,000 men, not including the number of children and women folk with five loaves and two fish. We speak of the miracle, the miracle of feeding so, so many people, all because they had faith in Jesus. They had faith in the divine. They had faith in God. And it's about their needs were met, not their wants. Their needs were met. And we deep down know that regarding our own communities or regarding our own families, the needs, the immediate needs, are very easily uh, obtained. The struggle is our wants, what we want, and sometimes our greed. Mahatma Gandhi said that there's enough there is enough of the world's resources to satisfy the need of everyone. Enough. But he said, there is not enough of the world's resources to satisfy the greed of everyone. 
There lies the challenge for the 21st century. It's the wants and the desires and the selfishness that causes a lot of problems. Hunger is not necessarily the result of a harvest failing. Hunger comes about because of war, uh, selfishness, violence, greed. Interesting. That's coming out of the gospel. And Mahatma Gandhi also said, he said, I love your Christ. I dislike you Christians because you are so unlike your Christ. That's Mahatma Gandhi. And he's a humble man. He was a learned man. He was an attorney at law. And he lived very fugally to support his own people. That's what we are reflecting on. God responds to the needs of his people. But we need to be people of faith. The 5,000 men, the women and children, had a deep faith in Jesus. They came, they flocked to him. They want to listen to Jesus. They knew that Jesus would help them in their need. Help them in their need? Certainly. And when you come in faith, God helps us. It's as simple as that. Now, um, Gilbert Keith Chesterton, uh, Anglo-Saxon, born in London in the 1800s. He became a very famous writer, uh, play writer. He was a great philosopher. And he also studied theology. He was a lay theologian. And he once said, Christianity has not failed. Christianity has not been tried. That was the sum total of one of the deep insights. Christianity has not failed. It's just that it has not been tried. Interesting. He was influenced in his philosophical and theological uh, studies. He was influenced by uh, C.S. Lewis. He was also influenced by St. Thomas Aquinas. That, that concept of the need and the desire and the faith to believe. And he developed a very strong and a very powerful relationship with his God. And from there, he became a Catholic because he really believed that the, the discipline, the spiritual discipline of the Catholic Church is greatly needed and required for a very disgruntled and a very laid back uh, and selfish society. That's Gilbert Chesterton. Now when Pope Francis, when Pope Francis was uh, Archbishop of Buenos Aires in Argentina, he had said then that Gilbert Chesterton was a modern day saint. He had such high regard for the man in his depths of theology and in his wisdom of philosophy. And there lies a call to each and every one of us, the need to have faith. If we have faith, God will answer our needs. Remember a few Sundays ago, when Jesus could not walk any miracles in Nazareth because the people there had no faith in Jesus. He could not 
walk any miracles. So that means for that moment, Jesus became powerless. He could not walk miracles. The all-powerful Jesus Christ, because there was no faith, he could not walk any miracles. Now that's, an in, that's a study now. Well, I need to go back to my Christological uh, sheet notes to find, uh, and try to understand how can the most powerful person for one brief moment be powerless. But we're talking about a faith, a faith and a belief that God is there looking after our needs. <coughs> God will look after our needs. And that is simply what sacred scripture is saying. Elisha, a prophet of God, a holy man, believed that the 20 barley loaves and sack of grain would be adequate to feed the 100 men. The apostles doubted Jesus when he asked them to get the people to sit down. He blessed what was there and it was adequate. It was sufficient. Remember, God will look after our needs. God will not look after our greed. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, my dear sisters and brothers, we offer up our petitions, whatever they may be. Almighty God, we pray for Pope Francis, Archbishop Gordon, and the clergy, that with your guidance and direction, they may continue to inspire us all to emulate your generous spirit in everything we do and see. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Dear Father, help us as a church to set priorities that reflect your ideals and that we, your people, remain excited to attend the King's Feast which you have prepared for us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Loving God, bless our nation, citizens, and all our elected leaders. May your Holy Spirit guide them when making decisions with respect to relaxing coronavirus restrictions, taking into account the health, social, and economic needs of the people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Wondrous teacher, just as the hand of the Lord feeds us, give to our parishioners and the wider community the courage to continue to share whatever we have with the less fortunate, as we look forward to being called to your banquet, 
where everyone will partake in your generosity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty One, we pray that you instill confidence and remove any fears that may prevent brothers and sisters in responding to your call to liturgical service. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Also in our celebration, we join our prayer of thanks for well, all the good people who are celebrating their birthdays, celebrating their wedding anniversaries, celebrating gifts received from the Almighty. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. A number of our good people are praying for particular intentions that the Lord in his goodness will hear their cry. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for healing for those who have asked for healing, that the Lord will raise his healing hand over them. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for our departed loved ones, that the Lord in his goodness will receive them all into his heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. We make our prayers to Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and walk of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. May the mystery of this water and wine come to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and walk of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the will of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful walking of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. We make our prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, will all the angels, we praise you, as a joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, Holy. Holy. 
Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of your body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the, the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jason, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and our brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Oh. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I may love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, breath of God, until my heart is pure. On a tell with thee, I have one a will to live and to endure. Oh God, we ask that you breathe your Holy Spirit upon us. Because we have not been given a law written on stone, but a law written on our hearts by your Holy Spirit. Not a law of death or destruction, but a law of love. Setting us apart to be your people. And joining us in the body of Christ. So that we are one body with you. Oh God. Breathe your Holy Spirit upon us this day. That, uh, that the veil before our eyes may be removed, Lord. And we may see the truth of the relationship you want with us. We may understand the truth of that relationship and in understanding that, Lord, that we may open our hearts wide to all that you would ask of us. Breathe on us, O God, your Holy Spirit, this day. We pray, Lord, that the ways in which we have not lived by your precepts, that we may be convicted this day and be allowed to experience, Lord, that grace of conversion of heart. That we may be convicted this day and we may be allowed, Lord, to enter into a deeper relationship with you. Give us grace this day, O oh God. Give us grace. That we may yield to you. Oh my Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. And I love you above all. And I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. 
Amen. 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 I thank thee for thy bounties. Amen. Little boy of thirteen is on his way to school. He heard a crowd of people laughing and he went to take a look. Thousands were listening to the stories of one man. He spoke with such wisdom, even the kids could understand. The hours passed so quickly, the day turned into night. sure what good it do there were thousands to be fed but he saw the twinkling eyes of Jesus the kindness in his smile and the boy cried out with the trust of a child he said take my father Let us pray. We have consumed 
O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son, grant, we pray, that this gift which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling may profit us for salvation. We make our prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of the Lord. And to spend a pleasant day. Same to you, Father. God bless you. Mold us, Lord, as the potter's clay. Fall us, Lord, with your spirit today. Shape us, Lord, in the likeness of Jesus, your Son, so we his flock may continue what the great shepherd has begun. Fill us, renew us, restore us, release us all over the land. With boldness and power, yet to silence clay in your hands.